Hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about my July favorites. This is my favorite video to film every single month. I'm really excited to share with you what I have been loving this past month. I've got a lot of new goodies. I have some things that I have pulled out from the back of my drawer. And for those of you who are new to my channel, what I like to do is apply as many of the products um, as possible on my face. And I will cut away to B-roll of me applying them so you can see the products in action. So I've got a really long list here. I, I thought this summer was going to be quiet. Nay, nay, it was not quiet. And I am going to start with two things that are uh, not makeup. I've got a skincare product that I want you to share with you. I've been using this for the past, uh, I want to say like three and a half weeks. And I showed this to you in a vlog because some assembly is required. So Exponent Beauty, I don't know if you guys have heard of them. They're a relatively new skincare brand. Um, I was really excited to try out this product from them. They did send this to me. Um, and the idea behind their brand is that they like to keep like the final ingredients separate from one another so that the entire product stays fresher. I don't think I made much sense saying that, but if you go onto the Exponent Beauty site, and of course I will list it down below and link to it down below in my description box, um, they talk about you know why it's good to kind of like keep everything separate and kind of like mix it last minute, like right before you're gonna use it. It keeps the product fresh that way. So when you do end up using it, it's the most like potent form and the freshest form. So they sent me their um, new Time Rewind Retinol. I think that's the full name, but it's their retinol. And as you guys know, if you guys have been watching me for any length of time, I have very dry, sensitive skin and I've always, always stayed away from retinols. And most recently, I decided to try Droplets Retinol Capsule, and I was using that one at night. I was using their collagen one during the day. I've been using their Tranexamic um, Eraser. That's been really, really great. But I thought, you know what? My skin has definitely become more resilient as I've gotten older. It's just less sensitive. And I thought, let me, let me try what everyone else has been using, uh, retinol. And so I kind of started a little bit slow with this Exponent Beauty uh, retinol. So it is a serum and what you do is there's like basically the liquid in here and the powder in here and you kind of mix the two um, in this little dish here and you basically create your own serum and they have a bunch of different powders basically. So anyway, this is the retinol and I've just been using it down here on my jawline. I have, you know, texture there. I have um, hyperpigmentation. I just have like a lot of issues along my jawline and I thought, well, why don't I start there? I also wanted to start slowly because it's retinol and I thought, well, if my skin freaks out and it's down here, it's down there. So anyway, I do use it at night and I, and that's uh, what Exponent Beauty recommends, by the way, is to use the retinol at night. And I would say I use it, um, I've been using it like twice a week. Yeah, I've been using it twice a week and my skin has never felt smoother. The texture that I've always had on my jawline, some days it's better, some days it's worse, but there's always been a little, it almost uh, feels like chicken skin, like that, um, what do they call it, the KPL skin? Is that what it is? Anyway, that chicken skin. It's always been kind of like that, and you know, I'll get like red blotchiness there. I cannot believe like how, I mean, not just like smooth my skin is, because like I said, there's some days where it's better, but I just, I'm just amazed. It's like smooth all the time now and not just like baby butt smooth, like really, really smooth. So I am not only really impressed by like the concept of this, um, where you're kind of keeping the ingredients fresh until you actually mix it yourself, but I'm really, really excited that this is a retinol that's effective. It's actually doing something, but it's not freaking out my skin at all. So this is my jawline after about three and a half weeks of using this. So I've used it approximately seven or eight times and it looks great. I do have a little bit of foundation on. So um, there is a little bit of coverage there, but I really can't believe just like, yeah, like how smooth and even everything looks along this area that I've just, I don't know, I've always kind of like given up on it when I exfoliate. It feels a little bit better for like a day or so, but you know, like the texture kind of comes back and I've never really thought much of it until this and I'm really loving this. So they do have other powders or whatever. Again, I'll leave a link uh, down below in my description box. 
they did give me a coupon code. I'll have to see if it's still good, but I'll list that down below as well. And that would be good for your um, first time purchase. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that because I know I talked about it in a vlog and I promised you guys that I would follow up with you. And I know some of you have sensitive skin as well and we're really curious about this retinol. So I'm really impressed so far. I'm really, really impressed. Um, so that's Exponent Beauty. And then one more thing before we get into makeup, and that is the sweatshirt that I'm wearing. I'm not gonna talk too long about it because I just talked about it in Friday's video uh, where I talk about forgotten loves, but I'm wearing like the more like cement colored one. This is the darker gray one that I mentioned. I love this sweatshirt. And I just want you to make sure that you guys knew like how much I loved it um, because I did uh, haul it for you guys when I did my Nordstrom anniversary sale haul. Um, and many of you I see have purchased it, but many of you also were like, can you follow up? Like, how does it fit? Do you still love it? Blah, blah, blah. I love it. I just love the pockets that it has. So it has like a kangaroo pocket. Um, sorry, my camera's not focusing. Um, and I think what I also love about it is like the, the luxe material that's used in the sweatshirt. So it feels like a sweatshirt. Uh, it's super duper comfortable, but it has this like sheen to the material. So I don't feel like a total slob <laughs> when I'm wearing it. It's like super duper comfortable, but like not, yeah, not, not too sloppy looking. Um, what I also love about it, because this is just a very personal pet peeve of mine, is when you like pull up your sleeves and the elastic isn't tight enough and it just keeps falling, like especially when you're doing dishes or something. This elastic is really, really, really snug. I love it. It's, it just stays. It just stays up there. So anyway, I love this sweatshirt. It is still on sale during the Nordstrom anniversary sale. So I think on sale it's $60 and after the sale, it's going to be $90. So there's three colors. I got the gray, the light gray, and I think there's a green, which I'm tempted to pick up. Um, and a huge like size range. So anyway, I will also link to this down below in my description box, but I just love it. It's by Zella, by the way, which I think is the like Nordstrom in-house fitness brand. Um, they've got like great leggings too. Anyway, um, so just wanted to mention this sweatshirt, but let's go ahead and get into makeup. And what I wanted to do, this is a little bit different for favorites because usually I just tell you my favorites, why I love them or whatever. But I did want to talk about Foundation, because two new foundations came out this month. Um, I did a wear test for both of them. I've been wearing both of them like kind of uh, all month, basically, ever since I got them. So the Lancome Tante Idol Ultra Wear Care and Glow Foundation, and I have it in the shade 105W, and then the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation, and I have it in the shade 3. Now, I have been, like I said, like wearing both and really testing them out and just you know, really trying to figure out if one is like better than the other. There are like pros and cons to both. I will rattle off a few for you. So Lancome claims to have up to a 24 hour wear. Um, it has SPF 27 in here, uh, but there is a little bit of fragrance in here and um, they don't state anything about being like cruelty free or vegan where hourglass is cruelty free and vegan they don't have an spf in here and their claim is aware of up to 16 hours so a lot of people kind of made their decision based on those things you know the fragrance or the cruelty free or the vegan things like that and that is great like you can just kind of like knock one out because they are very 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 similar i will say however for me Personally, the one that came out on top, the one that I like just a little bit more is the Lancome. And I will tell you why. Now, the shade, I like the shade in the Lancome better. It is 105W, like I said, and I have three in Hourglass. The 105W, even though it's a 105 Warm, is a little bit, uh, just it's just a better match for my skin tone. The three in Hourglass is just a little bit, um, it has like a yellow uh, undertone, but there's something kind of like, white about it. It's just, yeah, it's just an off shade. But putting all of that aside, um, what I did this past week was I actually applied both of these foundations long after I had put on my skincare. So generally, I, you know, get out of the shower, I do my skincare, I blow dry my hair, and then I come down and I do my makeup. And so my skincare is still really fresh on my skin. My skin is feeling really plump. There's probably still a little bit of like tackiness and moisture from my skincare. I put these foundations on and it's fine. So then I was like, well, you know, I need to like get ready to film or whatever it was. And so I put on the hourglass and my skin was dry 
And man, did this feel dry on my skin. It just sort of like, it was almost hard to put on. It was like, it felt thick, which is strange because the texture of this isn't thick at all. So I was just kind of confused and I was like, oh wow. So as I was putting it on, I was like, okay, on this side of my face, let me throw on some of my um, Bobbi Brown primer, the vitamin rich face base, um, cause that's a really great moisturizing primer. So I put that on and that helped a lot. So the next day I thought, okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with Lancome and see what happens. And so my skincare had been completely absorbed. It had been hours since I had put it on. And then I applied the Lancome and I didn't have the same issue. So the Lancome for me just applies a little bit better in different instances where I feel like my skin has to be really well moisturized for this hourglass to kind of apply nicely and apply with like a little bit of a lighter coverage because both of these claim to have a medium coverage and I like a little bit of a lighter coverage um, and I can generally achieve a light medium coverage with both of these so long as my skin is moisturized it glides on nicely um, so what I will say is I'm gonna guess because it's hard for me to predict. I have very, very dry skin, but I'm gonna predict that this is probably better for oilier skin types where you don't need to have <laughs> all of this like artificial moisture in your skin, all the skincare uh, piled up on your skin uh, for it to apply nicely. So that was just kind of like the quick foundation talk I wanted to pass along to you because I didn't wanna just say, oh, Lancome is my favorite without kind of addressing like why and um, talking about how I continue to kind of test these two foundations. So long story long, I like the Lancome just a little bit more than the Hourglass and that is what I have on today. I think it um, also does wear a little bit longer. I don't generally wear my makeup for that long, but when I did a wear test for these two foundations, I had the foundations on for 14 hours. So I cut my wear test off, like the filming of it, off at about 12 hours, but then I had it on for a couple more hours before I washed it off. And what I noticed before I washed it off is that uh, the side with the Lancome still looked a lot smoother. My pores seemed to be a little bit more blurred where I felt like my, um, yeah, like I just looked a little bit shinier and my pores looked like a little bit more pronounced on the hourglass side after 14 hours. So anyway, that is my uh, assessment on those, those two foundations. And yeah, and I just wanted to mention this long comb as one of my favorites for this month because it really is very, very beautiful. The finish is very, very skin-like. Like I said, this particular shade works very well for me, 105W, and I really like it. I really, really enjoy it. I enjoy applying it, wearing it. I don't feel it. It's not you know thick or makeup -y at all, and it wears very, very well. Okay, with that out of the way, I do want to, I usually go in order of how I apply my makeup, but I'm really excited to talk about lip, lip products this month. And I'm laughing because I think the last two favorites I did in, uh, yeah, in June and May, I made a point to even say like, uh, there really wasn't, that many lipsticks for me to be excited about. And I was like, uh, whatever. And I kind of, you know, was using uh, ones that I had been using for a long time. Anyway, this month is a completely, completely different story. Um, I wanna start with Poppy King making her comeback with this incredible silver bullet lipstick. This is the Lip Centric line from Poppy King. And this is the one lipstick that she's come out with. She has a lot of things up her sleeve that's gonna be released slowly over the course of, you know, the next few years, I suppose, but she's back. She pretty much had to take a hiatus over the lockdown and the pandemic, and you know, it was just tough to get things done. Anyway, I'm so excited that she's back. And if you guys are unfamiliar with Poppy King, she has a, a very long history creating lipstick, um, lip products. She loves lip products um, and working in the beauty industry. Uh, but most, most recently she had a line called Femme de Poppy, which is at Barney's. And before that she worked um, or, you know, was a uh, part of Lipstick Queen. And so Lipstick Queen had a lot of color changing lipsticks. And so many of you have mentioned like frog prints. Oh my God, I remember frog prints. It was just, anyway, it was like such a nice moment in makeup history, kind of like reminiscing about Lipstick Queen. But anyway, she's back. And this silver bullet is so much fun. So this is what the lipstick looks like in the bullet. And I've used this quite a bit, so you can see that the color kind of turns into this really fun fuchsia pink. Now, what's cool about this lipstick is you can kind of customize the intensity of it. You can put it on just one swipe 
and you get this really sheer kind of like silvery, frosty, um, kind of like baby pink underneath uh, sort of uh, lip color. And then if you kind of layer it up, you can get something really frosty and the pink just gets like brighter and bolder. This does develop over the day. So this was maybe, what did I just do? I went back and forth like uh, four times. And this pink will develop during the day and it'll kind of turn into a stain. So the silver, the frostiness will kind of wear away, but you'll be left with this really pretty like fuchsia pink stain on your lips. So if you're still wearing a mask, the silver will probably wear away with your mask wear, but you'll be left with this like beautiful pink. But I really, really love that, yeah, that I, I can wear it and that it's a fun, different kind of lipstick and I don't feel like silly wearing it. It's just really beautiful. And the formula is incredible. It's moisturizing, it feels great on the lips. Uh, you can, you know, feel free to keep reapplying it during the day. If you want to like kind of amp up the silver again, you can just put on like one or two swipes and it feels great on the lips. It's this really nice kind of like thin, moisturizing, nourishing kind of formula. And it's, it's just gorgeous. So anyway, that is the silver bullet from Poppy King. And it is only available um, on her Instagram, um, like her Instagram shop, which I'll link to down below. At least I'll, I'll link to her Instagram profile so you can go there um, and shop. And it is only available in the US right now. So she is like a one woman show. And, um, you know, she's just, she's just trying to figure out shipping internationally that isn't cost prohibitive because I feel her pain. Uh, you know, this lipstick I believe costs uh, $28. And I think she has something around four or $6 shipping within the US, but if she were to ship this internationally, it would double the, the price of the lipstick. So anyway, um, it is only available in the US right now. So that is a Silver Bullet from Poppy King. And then the other lipstick release that came out is Lisa Eldridge's new uh, Luxuriously Lucent Lipsticks, Seven New Shades, and then the Insanely Saturated Lipsticks, Three New Shades. So I have the shade Meet Me in Berlin. This is one of the uh, luxuriously lucent lipstick and formulas. And I, I just uh, I just love like a really kind of like sheer, lightly or or mildly pigmented lipstick. They're just gorgeous. And Meet Me in Berlin is just perfect for me. I just love like a slightly cool tone brown lip. It is probably because I kind of grew up in the late 80s and 90s. I just love a grungy makeup look. And this is grungy without too, too edgy. It's like a soft, it's like a soft grunge. Anyway, I just love this lipstick formula, shade, everything about it. It's, it's so, so good. So that is Meet Me in Berlin. I love all of her shades, but this is like the one, I remember watching her video where she introduced these new shades. This is the one that I was waiting for. <laughs> and this is the one that, yes, indeed, I just love so much. So all of the new Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, they're all just incredible. If any of the shades kind of appeal to you, I go for it. Absolutely, especially the Luxuriously Lucent formula is my favorite because they are, they're very moisturizing, they are lightly pigmented, all of those things. And I just, yeah, I love them. Easy to wear, I just love it. So that's Lisa Eldridge. And then kind of in the same vein are the Merit Signature Lightweight Lip Lipsticks. And I thought maybe I talked about this in my last favorites because I feel like I've had, I've had these for a while now, but I don't, I don't think I did. Anyway, um, this shade is 1990. And you know what? I'm going to swatch this next to the Meet Me in Berlin because I've talked about them kind of in relation to one another. So the Meet Me in Berlin is this one. It has just a little bit more of like a pinkiness to it so that it's not terribly grungy. And then here is the Merit 1990, which is a little bit more grungy, but the Merit ones are even more lightly pigmented than the Lisa Eldridge, as you can see. And you can see how this pink is developing. Isn't that so fun? Oh, it's so beautiful. Okay, so the Meet Me in Berlin, a little bit more wearable, um, and the 1990, a little bit grungier. Now the signature lightweight lipsticks, um, like, like this kind of illustrates, they are very, very lightly pigmented and they're just 
like all the things I just mentioned about Lisa Eldridge's lipstick, they're just easy to wear, very comfortable, very nourishing, and I love them. Now, they have been out of stock. <laughs> Most of the colors have been out of stock for a very, very long time, but I just took a peek on Merit Beauty's website, and it looks like more shades have come in stock. So I am gonna be picking up more. I have 1990, which is the one that I've been wearing the most. I also have Slip, which is like a lighter, uh, like mid-tone nude shade. And then I have Millennial, which is like a pink. Um, but yeah, I've been reaching for 1990 the most. And if you've been intrigued by a grunge lip, but you're not really ready to take like the full dive into it, this is a really nice option because it's it's light. It's light, it's not, it's not too thick on the lips. It's not too opaque. And then the last lip product I wanted to talk about, I told you this month, it was like a full 180 from the previous two months, are these um, Sisley uh, Fito Twist, Fito Lip Twist. And I, I love these. I've had these for a very long time. These are not a new product. They came out with some new shades like months ago. And I, I just started like grabbing for them again. And I think it's because you know, all of these like lightly pigmented lipsticks kind of reminded me of this. So these are their Sisley's uh, Tinted Lip Balm. And let me just actually, okay, so these are my four favorite shades, or at least the four that I've been wearing the most this month. So this one is number one, this one is number seven, this one is number 11, and this one is number 24. This is one of the newer shades that came out, like I was saying like earlier this year. And I have been reaching for this one probably the most, but I have been reaching for all of them because I love them all so much. So Rosie New definitely has the most pink. Lychee number 11 has um, like a little bit of peach in there. It's hard to see because I have it next to number seven, this bright coral, uh, which is probably making it look a little bit more neutral, but it does have a little bit of peach in there. And then Nude, is the coolest toned one. So if you're unfamiliar with these, these are basically like Sisley's lip crayons and they have like a pointy tip and they roll up and down. These are uh, kind of described as a tinted balm and that's exactly what they are because first and foremost, they are very moisturizing on the lips. I do feel like I'm putting on a lip balm and they are just slightly tinted. I would say they're about the same level as the Merit a signature lightweight lips, they uh, a little bit lighter than the Lisa Eldridge, very lightly tinted, and just, again, just super easy to wear. They're perfect for the spring summertime, I think, especially this coral shade, it's so, so pretty. But yeah, this is a really great uh, rosy nude shade. Just impeccable, really, really impeccable formula, and I love like, I don't know, I'm kind of a sucker for like the crayon um, shape for lips because I just find it a little bit easier than a straight up like lipstick bullet, like these and the Armani Lip Powers, which I can't shut up about. I really love like the shape of the bullet and yeah, and how easy it makes it to apply. So just wanted to mention these as well. And that's it for lips, that's it for lips. Okay, let's move on. I do also, have a lot of blushes <laughs> to talk about. So I'm gonna start with the one that I'm wearing, uh, the Laura Mercier All That Sparkles blush. I love this. She came out with two new blush color infusions as part of this Rose Glow collection. They're in this like limited edition packaging. Um, I do love the other one, which I think is Peach Shimmer. It's beautiful, but I just wanted to you know, kind of pull out this one because this is the one that I've definitely been reaching for a little bit more. And again, that is what I have on my cheeks today. It's, it's just really, really, it's just really beautiful. I can't think of another word. <laughs> it's like the perfect kind of neutral tone, um, but there's definitely enough pigment there. And it has this beautiful, it's kind of hard to differentiate between like highlighter and blush, but there is like a really pretty sheen to this blush. Do you see that sheen? It's really, really gorgeous. So I wanted to mention that. Um, I did also want to mention, although I feel like I've been talking about these nonstop, but it's kind of like the Merit lipsticks. I thought I mentioned these in my last month's favorites, but I don't think I did. I think this was a love that was developed in the month of July, but these are the RMS uh, Redimension Hydro Powder Blushes. This is um, Maiden's Blush. This is a beautiful, beautiful like terracotta. And then I have five shades and I'm not gonna bore you with all of them, um, but Maiden's Blush, French Rose, yeah, French, sorry, French Rose 
is the other one that I love because it's just this really bright like bubblegum pink. And all of these blushes have a gorgeous, gorgeous sheen to them. They are of a baked formula, so you can apply them like like as a sheer veil or you can really build them up if you're going for like a really nice bright um, blush look. And then I wanted to show you uh, Mai Tai. This is just a fun, it's like the orange version of the French Rosé, but there's a nice bit of coral in here too. So I just think that this is like the perfect, look at these two together. It's like the perfect like summer pair of blushes. Like that's all you need. So just been loving these RMS blushes. They're just, yeah, they're just really, really beautiful. They're easy to use. And I just think the colors that they came out with were just perfect for the spring summertime. They're all just really, really, yeah, they just like scream summer to me. They're either really bright or they have kind of like a like a sun kiss, like sun tanned kind of vibe to them. Love it. Love it. Cannot get enough of these. I hope they come out with new shades. They have six. I have five of them. And then I wanted to mention the Givenchy Prism Libre Highlighter. Now, this is a very pink. Let me do a swatch for you. I do have it on my cheek, but I'm going to swatch it for you so you can see the tone of it. This is... Um, definitely a product with a lot of highlight in there because it's super duper shiny. So yes, it is a highlight, but there is quite a bit of pink in there. And so I am not particularly comfortable wearing this as a highlight where I traditionally wear a highlight, like on the tops of my cheekbones. I just think it's too pink. So for me, I love adding it on top of blush, using it basically as a blush topper. And when I demoed this, for the first time, I can't remember which video it is. Maybe it was just like a trying new makeup video. I put this on over one of the Victoria Beckham um, cheeky blush sticks, cheeky posh blush, <laughs> I can't remember the name. Anyway, one of her blush sticks. They don't really have like a sheen or any kind of like metallic shift to them at all. So it was fun adding this on top. And it just, yeah, it just turned out really, really beautifully. The one, the shade that I use is Fame. And I, I just really love, I love a good, um, radiant blush and this will essentially turn any of your blushes into a radiant blush and it's it's just really beautiful the sheen of this or the metallic sort of finish of this is so smooth like it's not micro glittery it's not uh chunky in any way it's smooth but it's also like it can be kind of sheer it's really really gorgeous and this is limited edition i just as I'm sitting here talking about this, I'm thinking, gosh, I hope it's still in stock. But anyway, I had to mention this. And then let's talk about House Labs here. I mean, Lady Gaga showed up. These are awesome. So I tried two of her Bio Radiant Gel Powder Highlights. I have Sunstone and Peach Quartz. They're very, very similar. Um, but these are, again, of like a baked gel gel a baked gel <laughs> formula and here are the two shades that i got so this one is peach quartz you can probably see there's a little peachiness in there and then this one is sunstone i have sunstone on my cheek so this is what you see like at the highest point of my cheek here right underneath my under eye these are really something else these are really really highlighty really really reflective and really really smooth so this one hold on this one the one closest to my thumb yeah this one is sunstone and then this one is peach quartz so sunstone peach quartz peach quartz i think you can see that it has just a little bit more warmth in there sunstone is purely like kind of like a champagne highlight I love both. Both uh, work for my skin tone. If you use me as like a reference, I think either will work for you. It just kind of depends on what your preference is. Um, so really been loving those and then really been loving her bronzer. So this is the Power Sculpt Velvet Bronzer. I have it in the shade Light Level 2 and that's what I have pretty much bronzing up my entire complexion. This is a pressed powder formula so this isn't like a baked chalet or anything. I just love using this bronzer. It's so so easy to use. It's not too pigmented. It's not 
you know, too lightly pigmented. The tone of it is wonderful. Like everything about it is just great. I pretty much like apply it all over my face, like a powder. Like it's one of those products I don't like, I don't even look anymore. I just stick my brush in and just kind of brush it all over, you know? And it's, yeah, it's just so, so easy to use. It builds up nicely, but like not too quickly. Like it's just, like I said, it's just really, really easy to use. The uh, formula of this, it's super smooth and silky. I find the tone of this to just work as a bronzer, as a contour. It, yeah, it just works all over. And like I said, just really easy. It builds up really, really nicely. Um, so that is the Power Sculpt Bronzer from House Labs. And what else? What else? Okay, let me share with you what I have on my eyes today. And this was something I resurrected from like the back of my drawer. Um, I showed this off in that video that I posted on Friday. And I just, it's not that I forgot how great these eyeshadows were, it's, but it's kind of like I forgot. I just, I kind of forgot about the um, eyeshadow palette in general. And this is the Valentino, you want to call it a quad, but there's actually eight uh, shadows in here. So this is kind of like a daytime quad. It's kind of like an evening quad. I basically have this shade all over, and then I have this shade uh, basically like kind of deepening up things. It's in like my socket line, it's in the outer corner, very, very subtle. And these shadows are so creamy, like really, really creamy. They apply like really beautifully, like almost like a cream to powder kind of uh, formula. And they're really gorgeous. And there's a lot of different finishes in here. Like this is a matte. These are like a really high shine satin. This is like um, a regular satin, and then we have some metallics here. This is a matte, this is a matte. Just a really beautiful array of uh, finishes and of shades. So I've really been enjoying this. This has been sitting out on my vanity ever since I did that video, and I've been loving it ever since, and I'm like, I gotta, I gotta mention this in my favorites. <laughs> it's, it's so, so good. And I could not, could not do this favorites video without talking about the ABH Nouveau palette. I mean, this is this is a really beautiful palette, and um, I kind of had to because I haven't used ABH shadows in a really long time. I kind of had to reacquaint myself with the formula. So, if you're unfamiliar with ABH formula, the eyeshadows are soft. They're very very soft. So, if you like jab your brush in there, you're gonna get a lot of kick up. Um, but I think that's also what makes them really easy to like blend out because they are you know, soft and powdery. They just kind of go with the flow. And so I find them really, really easy to use, really easy to blend out. And while this is really just not in my comfort zone, these shades, these are not shades that I wear often, they're just really beautiful. Like they're, they're still neutral in a way. I mean, maybe not this, this matte lilac shade, but there's still like a, like a neutral feel to all of them, even though we've got greens and we've got that peacock shade. It's just a really well done palette. And I have not fallen in love with an ABH palette since, I don't know, maybe Soft Glam, maybe that, or Sultry. I never got Sultry, but I really did like that color story. But maybe Soft Glam, that was the last one that I actually purchased and really, really enjoyed. So yeah, this is just really, really gorgeous. And I do reach for this palette for the more neutral shades. Like I do, I have used these two probably the most. Um, and then I'll try and like spice things up a little bit. You know me, I'm not that daring with my eyeshadow. I'll spice things up a little bit with one of these like metallic shades. This one I've probably used the most, um, but I've used this one on occasion. So yeah, I'm just really loving this ABH Nouveau palette. It's really, really good. It's just really good. And then I just wanted a round of applause. This is an eyeshadow that has appeared in many, many of my favorites, but I actually hit pan on my Westman Atelier iPod in Tabak. And I show this off in one of my vlogs. I'm just so proud of this fact, you guys. I don't hit pan <laughs> often, ever. I know I have on, on a few products over the years, but really I just have a lot of makeup. You know, I'm kind of like always rotating through stuff. Um, so it's very difficult for me to hit pan. So when I do, you know, you know I love the product. So I just had to mention that. I just had to show this off. I am, um, I'm gonna try and use up this eyeshadow by summer's end, which won't be difficult for me because if I don't know what else to do with my eyeshadow, I usually just pull this out, <laughs> just put it all over. Um, so that I definitely had to mention. 
And then for mascara, so last month I talked about the Lancome Le Huit Hypno Serum Infused Mascara, and that is the one that has peptides in there and it helps your lashes grow. And I really felt like it was helping my lashes grow. Every time I used it very consistently, um, I could see like the length in my lashes. And so I didn't, I didn't really want to try any other mascaras. I was like, oh, well, I don't want to like lose this like length to my, uh, to my lashes, uh, because my lashes are so puny. So I decided to start using one layer of the Lancome and then another layer of a different mascara, you know, other mascaras I want to try. And one mascara that I've tried alone, but lately on top of the Lancome is the Mob Beauty mascara. And I've just recently become more and more aware of Mob Beauty. I know Beautylish sells them, and I was actually invited to one of their like Zoom informational calls, uh, meetings, and learned a lot about the company. And I'm really excited. I wanna do like a full face of Mob Beauty because one of the founders of Mob Beauty is one of the like geniuses behind MAC Cosmetics. And anyway, they just have a really interesting story. So I just, I've been using their mascara and I really love it. Like this mascara is so, it like applies like so evenly over each lash, which I find very, very difficult. I maybe can less, less than five mascaras that I feel like can do that really nicely. The Surat is one, but this Ma Beauty, it does the same thing and it's, yeah, it just like coats each lash really, really evenly, really, really beautifully. And yeah, it's just, it's lovely. It doesn't smudge, it doesn't flake, like all of those things, all the basics that you want out of mascara, but I really love the way my lashes look. So my lashes here, they have one coat of the Lancome and then they have the Ma Beauty on top, which really is what kind of amps them up. Um, so that's the Ma Beauty mascara. And then last but not least, and I wasn't even really prepared to talk about these because I assumed that the, this was going to be sold out. And I am, well, I'm thrilled for you guys that it's not sold out because I cannot recommend these brushes enough. This is the Sonia G Mini Kayaki Set Part 2. I'm looking for the fifth brush, which may be by my sink. I've been using these brushes nonstop since... They were sent to me. So Beautylish did send these to me, Beautylish and Sonia G. So a big thank you to them. So here are the five brushes in this mini Kayaki set. So the Jumbo Base is the only one that does already exist. These four brushes are new shapes. And I could not be more smitten with this brush. This is the Jumbo Worker and it is absolutely perfect for any kind of cream products like um, i love using it um, to blend in my concealer underneath my eyes i love putting like cream highlight down with it i love blending out my foundation around my nose if maybe that's gotten a little bit difficult it's just a worker it's a workhorse kind of brush and i just love this shape it's one of my favorites the jumbo base one of my all-time favorite foundation brushes so i've been using this non-stop and then we've got three smaller brushes, three eye brushes, if you will. And we've got one that's kind of like a, one of her worker brushes, but this is the Jumbo Blender. Um, it's just so versatile. We've got a crease brush, which is kind of like her crease pro brush, um, but works as a blender as well. It's really great. And then we've got this really interesting detail brush, which I've been using again, quite a bit because it's come in really handy when I want to do like a little bit of a smokier eye look. So it is a bit bigger than a pencil brush, than a typical pencil brush, but it does come to a tip. It's not as rounded as you would think a brush this size would be. So it's, yeah, it's just really versatile because you can use it straight on um, and just use the tip if you want to do some fine work, but then you just have to angle it down a little bit if you want like more surface area. So I'm like in love, in love with the set. I'm in love with all Sonia G brushes, as you know, but there's something about this set that I just, yeah, I just cannot get away from using it. Like I've washed these over and over again since receiving them so that I can keep using them. Um, so highly, highly recommend this mini Kayaki set. And her Kayaki sets, if you're unfamiliar, these are her travel sets. So they have a much shorter brush and they're made with this beautiful wood. Let me just show you. This is the jumbo base in the regular size. So this is the size difference in the handles, at least. Let me do this. So this is the regular and this is the travel. 
All right, guys, that is it for my favorites. Let me know what some of your favorite things have been this past month. I would love to hear from you. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.